All right, everyone, today we're tackling derivatives, a core area in finance that's all about contracts whose value is derived from an underlying asset or variable. Before we move forward, guys, want to download these PDFs? You're in luck. They're all neatly organized by topic area right here on this page. Just make your purchase, click download, and you're set for quick, efficient CFA prep. The link is also in the description below. Derivatives are everywhere in the markets from stocks and bonds to commodities and interest rates and they serve many purposes. Essentially, a derivative's value depends on the price or performance of something else, known as the underlying. Imagine a derivative as a bet on how the price of an asset will move. This makes it a popular tool for hedging against potential losses or simply speculating on future price changes. And because derivatives come with specific terms like maturity dates, contract sizes, and other conditions, they're a bit like a financial agreement that binds both parties to certain outcomes. The buyer of a derivative takes what's called a long position, meaning they're betting on the underlying asset increasing in value, while the seller holds a short position, betting it will fall. Whether it's a forward contract, option, or swap, the size of the contract, called the notional principle, is agreed upon upfront. And in some cases, we see embedded derivatives like in callable bonds, where a derivative feature is part of another financial instrument. Now, derivatives aren't risk-free. They come with counterparty credit risk, the chance that the other party won't fulfill their end of the deal. So, understanding who you're trading with and the terms of the contract is key in the world of derivatives. Let's talk about the types of derivatives because they're not all created equal. We have firm commitments like futures, forwards, and swaps where an agreed upon amount is exchanged at settlement. Then there are contingent claims like options which give one party the right but not the obligation to engage in a future transaction at previously agreed terms. For example, in a forward contract, say you agree today to buy 100 shares of ABC Incorporation for $50 each three months from now. No money exchanges hands right now, it's just an agreement. But on the settlement date, if ABC Incorporation's share price rises above $50, you'll benefit since you're locked into a lower price. However, if it falls, you'd still have to buy at $50, taking a loss. This kind of derivative allows you to plan ahead based on your expectations of price movements. Now, what underpins these derivatives? Derivatives can be based on just about any asset or variable, but the most common are equities, fixed income securities, interest rates, currencies, and commodities. For instance, equity derivatives include contracts on individual stocks or stock indices, allowing investors to trade on stock prices without holding the actual stocks. A classic example is an index option, where one party might pay the return on the S&P 500 index, while the other party pays a fixed rate or another index's return. Companies often issue stock options to their executives as a form of compensation. If the company's stock price rises, executives can profit, aligning their interests with shareholders. Moving to fixed income and interest rate derivatives, these contracts are often based on bonds or interest rates and they're among the most widely used derivatives. An interest rate swap is a common type here, where two parties agree to swap interest payments on a specified amount over a period. For example, one might pay a fixed rate, while the other pays a floating rate based on a market index like LIBOR. Swaps help companies manage their interest expenses based on their risk tolerance. Currency and commodity derivatives are also key players. Currency derivatives manage foreign exchange risk. Say a UK-based business expects a payment in US dollars in three months. To guard against currency fluctuation, they can use a forward contract to lock in the exchange rate. 
Commodity derivatives cover everything from agriculture to metals, helping businesses stabilize costs. For instance, airlines use oil futures to lock in fuel prices to avoid unexpected spikes, ensuring stable operational costs. Lastly, we have credit derivatives like credit default swaps, CDS, which act like insurance against a borrower's default. Imagine holding a bond issued by a company you think might struggle financially. By buying a CDS, you're protected from the company defaulting on the bond, as the swap seller will compensate for losses in such cases. When we think about derivatives, most people imagine traditional financial instruments like futures, options, and swaps tied to stocks, bonds, or commodities. But derivatives go far beyond these. There are derivatives tied to some pretty unconventional areas too. Take weather derivatives, for example. These are used by businesses like farmers or energy companies to hedge against unpredictable weather patterns, like an unusually dry season or a colder than average winter. Cryptocurrencies, the newest financial frontier, also have their own derivatives markets, allowing traders to speculate on Bitcoin or Ethereum without owning the actual coins. Then there's longevity derivatives used in the insurance and pension industries to manage risks associated with people living longer than expected. Even electricity, natural disasters, and other niche areas have derivatives. These instruments might sound exotic, but they play a key role in managing risk in highly specific and specialized markets. Derivatives are traded in two main markets over-the-counter, OTC, and exchange-traded, ETD. OTC derivatives are private contracts between two parties, like banks, where terms are customized to suit both parties' needs. Because they're flexible, OTC derivatives offer privacy, but this comes with lower transparency and higher counterparty risk since there's no intermediary to back up the contract. Think of large banks making complex swap agreements directly with each other to hedge risk. These agreements are part of the OTC market. On the other hand, exchange-traded derivatives are standardized contracts traded on regulated exchanges. These include futures and options contracts that come with set terms, conditions, and clear rules. Exchanges guarantee the contract's fulfillment through clearinghouses, making these derivatives highly transparent and liquid. For example, if you're buying a futures contract on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the terms are preset by the exchange, and any risk of counterparty default is handled by the clearinghouse, which acts as the middleman. The differences between OTC and ETD markets matter for investors. OTC markets offer flexibility, but come with higher transaction costs and counterparty risk, while ETD markets are highly liquid and transparent with daily settlement of gains and losses through a process called marking to market. Now let's dig deeper. When it comes to the differences between over-the-counter, OTC, and exchange-traded derivatives, ETD markets, there are a few key factors to keep in mind. OTC markets offer more customization and flexibility because contracts are privately negotiated between parties, making them ideal for tailored agreements. However, this privacy and flexibility come with higher transaction costs and lower transparency compared to ETD markets. In contrast, exchange-traded derivatives are standardized and traded on regulated exchanges, which makes them highly transparent and liquid. You can easily buy or sell without much delay. ETDs are generally more cost-effective for investors due to their standardized nature, though they offer less flexibility since the terms are set by the exchange. So, the choice between OTC and ETD markets often boils down to what's more important, customization or ease and transparency. 
After the 2008 financial crisis, global regulators focused on improving the safety of OTC markets, leading to the creation of Central Clearing Counterparties, CCPs. CCPs now act as intermediaries in many OTC contracts, accepting the credit risk and handling the clearing and settlement, similar to what clearinghouses do in ETD markets. This centralization helps reduce counterparty risk and increases market transparency, making OTC markets safer and more reliable. Now that we've covered the fundamentals, how do derivatives fit into the real world? Investors use derivatives for several purposes. They might diversify their portfolios, hedge against unexpected market changes, or simply take advantage of anticipated price movements with relatively low capital. For example, a company exposed to fluctuating commodity prices might use a commodity future to lock in prices, stabilizing their costs. Or a foreign investor with currency exposure could hedge against unfavorable exchange rate changes by using currency forwards. Derivatives allow for complex strategies like these, where risk can be managed, costs can be reduced, and exposures can be precisely controlled, all with less upfront capital than directly buying or selling the underlying asset. So there you have it, a complete view of derivatives for your CFA level one prep. We've gone from understanding what derivatives are and the role they play in finance to the types of contracts, the different underlyings, and the markets in which they trade. Remember, derivatives are powerful tools, but they come with their share of complexities and risks. Understanding how to navigate these contracts is essential for managing market exposure, hedging against risk, and even speculating on future price movements. Keep these principles in mind and you'll be well prepared to tackle any derivative questions that come your way on the exam. Great job today. Keep up the momentum and happy studying.